Steph Curry will be back playing tonight against Toronto. Stephen A., where are you on this, though? Should he be playing this year when they don't really have a My shot to make any noise? My position has been consistent. I wish, listen, Steph Curry has earned the right to do what he wants. I don't need him and Steve Kerr elevating their level of sensitivity like I'm trying to make decisions for them. But I will tell you, I'm not happy about him playing at all. This man has been to five NBA Finals. He's a three-time champion. But more importantly than that, there have been issues in the past where he's a bit fragile physically and injuries can happen. Now, we all know that that can happen to anybody. I get it. He's a treasure to the game. He's box office. He is the greatest shooter I have ever seen in my lifetime. So it's great to see him. But I'm saying, for me personally, I just wish he, like Clay Thompson, sat out the whole damn year, and I see them next year because I don't want anything to happen to Steph Curry at all. Uh, that's it. I, I was. That's weird. all. I, I've been back and forth on this, but you know what? This is where I am right now. If he wants to play a little yeah. bit, just don't overdo it. Just don't overdo it. Like, if it was an ACL or, or, or an Achilles especially or something like that, it was something with his wheels, you know what? Take the whole year off and, you know, get back. If it's a hand or a wrist or something like that, you can play a little bit, get, get in rhythm with the team, because let's not forget, Clay's going to get back next year. And I don't, by the way, I don't expect Clay to be right back 100% right away either. But by the end of next season, Golden State's going to be a problem. And Where let's are not they forget. They're going to be in the mix when that team's happening. They're not going to win the chip next year, but they're going to be in the mix, in the playoff mix for sure. And they're going to give teams problems, maybe win a series or two. The point is, they also got a treasure trove of draft picks now. Like, they're going to be a problem going forward. I don't mind if Steph gets in the mix, gets the rhythm with the team going, gets integrated in the team, and gets a little burn going, a little run going, as long as they don't overdo it. Because it's not a lower extremity, I'm okay. Hey, hey, look, look, as much as we talk about load management and players and back to backs and shortening the schedule, we have a guy that wants to play basketball yeah. and we're having a conversation about it. I agree with you. If he tore his ACL, if he tore his Achilles, and, and he needed to sit out a year and we're like, hey, don't rush back on stuff. He hurt his left hand. His legs are fine. His abs are fine. Like, he can run up and down. I believe that not only does he owe it to a fans, he owes it to himself. Just go play basketball. You're right. Don't overdo it. This man's not going to play 40 minutes in a back-to-back. -back. We all know that that's not going to be the mm -hmm. case. But mm -hmm. we know he should go out on the floor. He should go play 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. He should be a leader to the young players that they have mm -hmm. and that they have some talented young mm -hmm. players. Go be a leader. Show them what it takes to right. win that's games and win I'm situations. That's your so, take, Stephen A., because that's usually where you are if they're usually, healthy play. That's usually where I am. There is no question about that. I just feel differently about this when it comes to Steph Curry. And if you recall, you may not recall, I was saying this at the beginning of the season because the Warriors stunk. Yeah. And I knew they would stink. So what happens? You get out on the court. Steph Curry is a career 43.5% shooter from three-point range. Mm -hmm. He was shooting 43, 40, um, I'm sorry, 24% from three-point range at the time. What I'm saying is this. Because Steph Ke Kevin Durant was gone, because Klay Thompson was down, you're opposing teams and what you're going to do, you're going to go all out against these this perennial title contender over the last five years, a three-time champion over the last five years, the shimmying and the joking around and yeah. having a ball, whatever. Yeah. Now it's our turn to get at you. And you know this better than me because you've been on the court. When you got an opportunity, it's like shark and blood oh. infested oh. waters. You got an opportunity to get at a cat, you're going to do that. What I'm saying to you is that for me, when I think about Steph Curry, it's just my preference. Yes. When I think about him, I would never say something about LeBron in that regard, whether this is a physical specimen. But if you've shown any degree of fragility, even though it was with your ankles in the past or your foot or your knee, and in this case, that's not the case, it's just your hand, the season at this point is so meaningless for the Golden State Warriors, him being out there by himself is something that I worry about. That's all. And that's, I'm not, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying arrest the man because he plays or something. I'm just saying, yo, for me, I really, really wish that I didn't have to see well, him until I mean, next season. You could season. look at it one of two ways because take every player who ever played the game 6-3 and under. That's probably the greatest one. Like Steph is – take Steve Nash, but the, now the ball doesn't stick with him. And he has three championships, and he's an even better shooter. Like, Steph Curry is an insanely great player and, and one of the faces of the NBA. So does that mean he should be out there yes. represented or he should be taking extra special precaution? He should be careful, but that's why I say go out there and play, I, I, limit the minutes, don't play the second of back to back. Uh, before you go, uh, this is what I'm really trying to say. Again, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I, I'm the one that usually takes these I, positions. I, that's what but I'm, I'm saying. But for me... 
the Warriors ain't going anywhere. Their season is over. My mentality is, is like, damn, you out there by yourself. I worry. That's all. And, and, and That's that, all. And, and my thing is this. Steph is a two-time MVP, mm -hmm. like we know. Right. There's going to be some games where he could go out there and do it himself. The, he said he's not going to be James Harden at the top of the key, dribbling 92 times, trying to shoot, you know, 15 threes, because that's not his makeup, that's not his body type, that's not his game. But he needs to go out there and play. He needs to go out there and play. Start setting the tone, even if it's just for how hard you work, the professionalism that that's you fair. show. All of those things Richard, to me go a long way. Talk to me about this, because obviously I'm excited to see him and Clay back healthy, and then KD and Kyrie in Brooklyn. Where do you think they'll rank in the West next year? Like, are they below the LA teams, ahead of Houston? Yes, Where would you have them? I, I would have them if they play quality basketball, I would have them somewhere in the four or five range. Because let's look. look Warriors? I, yeah, the Warriors. Somewhere in the I four or five range. Four or five behind who? But now, no, and this is my thing. Go look at how loaded the Clippers are. Let's yeah. look at how loaded mm -hmm. the Lakers are. Now, but the Warriors are going to get loaded too no, now. But that, okay. that, that's the uh, uh, three uh, spot then. Uh, how uh, do you uh, get uh, down uh, to five? Because I truly believe that there is more talent because when the Warriors have been great, they either had the, t the three best shooters of all time in Draymond Green mm -hmm. and veterans, or they had one of the most loaded teams when they won, when they won you know, but 73 games. if you look at the front office, Artie, if you look at the front office, they have enough movable pieces other than the core three that they're going to put together a monster. So we're talking about what they're going to put together. I'm talking about right now when yeah. they get those two guys out and I look at what their bench is now. Now it's going to be different, mm -hmm. but I'm saying right now, if you were to have those guys, i put them in the four or five Listen, range. here's the deal. I've got them in top three okay. in the Western Conference. I think they're the greatest shooting backcourt in the history we, of basketball. We agree. Without question. And I think Andrew Wiggins is no scrub. It's just a matter of his whether or not he wants it. He's no scrub. Now, the brother no. is averaging 25. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.